Hello and welcome to this self-care webinar from the Fit MT and Massage Magazine Insurance Plus. I'm Karen Minahan, editor of Massage Magazine, and our presenter today is Angela Lehman. Angela is a massage therapist for 25 years who also owns the Fit MT, through which she promotes fitness and nutrition for massage therapists. With her kinesiology degree is specialized in nutrition, Angela trains therapists in healthy eating, exercise, and body mechanics to prolong their careers. Angela also writes a monthly self-care column for Massage Magazine, which you can find on massagemag.com. So in this webinar, Angela will focus on healthy body mechanics, exercise, and nutrition to help massage therapists engage in pain-free practice. And remember that you can add your questions to the chat for Angela to answer later on in the webinar. And anyone registered for this webinar will receive a link to watch it later on. Welcome, Angela. Hi, thank you, Karen. Happy to be here. Yeah, so I'm just going to bounce off right now. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. So, hi, everybody. We, um, we're going, I've maybe been a little ambitious with the number of slides that I want to cover today. So I know people will trickle in as we're going, we are watching the chat. So thank you guys. Uh, I'll be a little interactive today and you can make some comments in the chats. Of course, put questions in the chat that will all be answered at the end. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Give me a moment here. So we do see your screen share. That looks great, Angela. Okay, thank you. And then if you've got my audio, we are all good. Okay. So our title for today is Best Body Mechanics. We are going to look at how obviously our body mechanics need to uh, prevent injury for us, as well as it's going to improve your massage at the table. So really good strength as we talk about and balance and coordination around the table will improve all your work and make it more fluid. So we'll talk briefly on that and you'll see how it all ties together. So welcome. And today in our time together work, we are going to take a look at what you may be already doing correctly in your body mechanics. We'll see if there's anywhere that you can improve things that you can do outside the massage room to set yourself up for body mechanics success. And really what more important resource do you have in your business than your body? As manual therapists, we use this great tool to help others and we need our body, but we really need them. We need it healthy. As healthy as you can be is going to translate into better client focused work. Um, there was a recent study that showed 83% of massage therapists reported work related pain in their wrists, hands, and thumbs at some point during their career. I don't know if that strikes you as really high, but that's a high number. And we know that our industry is, comes in even higher than uh, other manual therapists and nurses, even as far as our burnout rate and injury rate. And there's just a lot that we can do for ourselves physically to be more fit and strong that we can prevent a lot of these injuries if we take the time and get the knowledge to do so. So at the Fit Massage Therapist, we focus on catching pain early, providing the tools to fix it, or better yet, prevent it all together with good nutrition and good body mechanics. Really great body mechanics. I want your body mechanics to become so second nature that you could do it in your sleep. You're doing it without thinking. You're thinking about what you're doing at the table, and yet everything is lined up perfectly for you to utilize these tools, these great tools that we have. So my goal for you is to never lose a day of work because your body's hurting. 
So as a massage therapist, yes, I've been in this 25 years now. And, and really I was studying in college and this had never occurred to me that this would become my career. But um, I have found every facet of the massage industry very fulfilling. Um, I've owned and operated a massage clinic while working inside it as a massage therapist. Um, I've taught massage therapy from brand new students learning their body mechanics from the ground up to anatomy and physiology. I was a personal trainer for years and years, and now I've transitioned over to online educating and um, become an author. So I have a best-selling book that I started. Um, all of these areas, though, repeatedly show me, and I keep hearing and seeing therapists working with pain. And so this area has become my passion and area of focus now is just to help people it's all within our own body to be able to do this without pain and to see as many clients a week as you would like. So to me, fitness is the base of all of this. Fitness is the way for you to work a long massage career. And I want you to be the fit MT. I want you to know and move your body and know the strength that you need around the upper body in particular that we're going to talk about today. So um, this talk will be a little interactive. At times I may have you do something wherever you're sitting, or if you can uh, do something with us. Um, we're also going to ask a couple questions in chat. So you can type in your little answers there and I'll keep an eye on those. We'll have time for questions at the end today. Okay, and then if you've got your workbook that you've downloaded and you or you're somebody who likes to follow along, um, get a pen and paper out and we can follow along as we go. In the chat, there's a link if you missed your download emailed to you earlier. Okay, so what we're gonna to cover today is a quick body mechanics review. We're gonna look at the muscles that were most used as you work around the table, the muscles that you use the most surrounding the joints that we need to be healthy. We're gonna to get to look at some nutrition for good body mechanics and a way to keep your energy up throughout your whole day and the body mechanics pitfalls that most of all of us are guilty of falling into these pitfalls, but we need to catch them early. And um, I do wanna to touch on fit hands because hand pain is one of the number one things that we will hear reported as injury. So we're gonna look at how to keep our hands safe. Okay, so I have to assume that in massage school, you had some training in body mechanics. So this is going to be a quick review and I've just bullet pointed here for you all to see some of the main body mechanics, interesting, things that you should know, or some of this should look familiar to you. So the stance, we all know that there's two main stances that we use around the massage table. You should be weight shifting at all times. A lot of our power in our strokes comes from a weight shift. Your table height should be set up correctly. Don't tend to get lazy if you come in and share a room with somebody else and you're like, ah, I only have three people today. I don't need to move the massage table. Um, the height of the table does matter. So take the time to do it. Stay behind your work. That means we should be arm distance away from our work. Vary your tools. We're gonna to talk about that later, but get good at using other tools than just your hands. And on those, I'm talking about your elbows, your forearms, your fists. Uh, stack your joints is really important. You should have bone supporting bone all the way from the working tool up your shoulder arm. Your shoulders should stay down and back as you're working. The serratus anterior muscle should be engaged and we're going to go over and I have a quick little video on that, why that's so important and how that works for you really, really well as a massage therapist. Your core should be engaged. Yes, we talk a lot in the FitMT about core strength and how great the core is for other parts of your world out there beyond the massage table too, but definitely for your massage work, you need a strong core. And then the breath, I think sometimes we forget to breathe as we're working or we're really focusing on something or getting more pressure for, for a certain area or um, just remember to keep breathing. And that's a really important part of your body mechanics too, as, as our breath is flowing. Okay, we're gonna narrow this down, but 
massage therapists need upper body strength and this strength surrounds the joints that we use the most at the table. So if you think of your upper body musculature, these six muscles that we're going to quickly go over, I'm going to give you some more information on, but one of the reoccurring variables when therapists are in pain is lack of strength. Upper body and core strength are the most common areas that massage therapists need to be strong in. So we need a basic strength around the joints that we use the most to deliver the force of our stroke through those joints. And repetition is a part of our job that we really can't omit, but we can work stronger and we can work smarter. So if we can strengthen our bodies, that just hand in hand goes into us avoiding injury and becoming a better, more fluid therapist around the table. So let's look at the first muscle. Basically, I'm gonna go through the muscle. There's just a great picture there for you to, you know, pop it into your mind as a refresher. But what we need to look at is why this muscle, why I've chose this one, why this is important for a massage therapist. And then I'm gonna give you a quick exercise or two that you could do to strengthen this. So, um, a good rule of thumb, assuming you're a beginner and a good rule of thumb, just to throw it out there for all of these exercises would be doing something three to four days a week. Just do a few sets or repetitions of these. Some of these isometric holds could be just 20 seconds to begin with, then to maybe 30 seconds as you get stronger. But all of these exercises can be done in about 10 minutes in a day. So it's not like you have to have a two hour gym membership and go two hours a day. And it, it's not a big to do to get this bit of basic strength that you need. And it can be done in between clients. It could be done before clients. So strengthening as a massage therapist should be part of your job. Taking care of your body is part of your job. This all translates into you being a more successful business owner or a more successful therapist with getting those repeat clients coming to you. So strength being part of your job, if you look at it like that, the 10 minutes a day, it's not so hard to fit in there. So for rectus abdominis, this muscle is needed for posture and balance during all movements around the massage table. An exercise could be crunches, planks, isometric knees to chest. And this little picture here, she's demonstrating she's just got her knees pulled up towards her chest. This is the isometric contraction, which is her hands are pressing down against the knees and then the knees aren't moving. So that takes those tummy muscles and gets them nice and tight. And this is harder than it looks. If you've never tried this, this is a great one. Start here sometime today. Uh, isometric knee contraction, knees to chest. All right, the next muscle, important for massage therapists, this erector spinae group. This is needed for posture, balance, stabi stability around the table during all your massage strokes. And as you move around the table, um, think of the rectus abdominis, the front of your body, as there we go. Front of your body, um, your core muscles here with the rectus abdominis. Now the erector spinae group comes to the back of the body and then that's creating a nice postural back of the body of the core. The obliques wrap the sides, but all of this holds our trunk like a girdle. And if it's strong and supported, we can move around the table much more fluidly. We can um, even drape more fluidly. We can move from a bow stance to a horse stance. Uh, the client should never feel what stance you're in or how you move. Like everything should just be really fluid around the table, like a dance. So the stronger that you are and the better that you get with holding your body in your posture and stacking those, those feet from the ground up, creating your body mechanics from the ground up, um, and really grounding into the floor. All of this strength here through the core lets you be a more fluid mover through the massage. And clients love the fluidity of, even if they don't know why they like your massage better, it stands out. Your massage is more fluid and your massage feels better. Um, so a good exercise for the erector spinae group is a Superman. And that's just what she's got here. You can just lay on your stomach on the floor anywhere, lift the hands and legs off the floor, do a 20 second hold, do a 30 second hold as you get stronger. There's back extensions. 
which are also um, a strengthening exercise option for this group of muscles. And moving on to serratus anterior, this muscle, I don't know, I feel like it's overlooked a little bit or a lot for massage therapists. The serratus anterior, really, really important. It's needed to stabilize our scapula during massage strokes. So a good exercise for this is a wall push-up, which we're gonna look at next and demonstrate. Um, a plank is good. This is a bit of a secondary muscle during the plank, but a plank is good for serratus too. And um, I'm just gonna let this next slide show you how to engage the serratus. And um, you may need to up your volume a little bit. I did the best I could with this, but here you go. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and try a serratus wall push up a little bit later today. Uh, the next muscle is your pectoralis major and pec minor too, but we've got a picture of pec major here and we're gonna, uh, they work together. So we're gonna use this muscle important for applying force to a massage stroke and stabilizing our working arm. So as force is applied, especially during a deep tissue work or a compression, an isometric attraction can occurs and continues throughout that stroke. So as pressure is applied to the working tool, whether it be your, your forearm or your hand at the time, the pec major is contracting to hold that working arm in place. So weakness of this muscle will lead to breakdown around our shoulder joint. And a beneficial exercise for this would be push-ups. There's all variations of push-ups from beginners to advanced um, and the plank. So the next muscle is a helper for that pec major and it's the deltoid we're gonna talk about next. So along with the pectoralis, the deltoid helps support the working arm. As the shoulder flexes forward to allow the arm to be used as a tool, the deltoid, the anterior deltoid specifically is contracting. Then as the stroke is applied, the deltoid acts as a synergist with the pectoralis to hold the flexion of the glenohumeral joint. This is an easy, I kind of like this exercise right here. A plank is a good possibility for strengthening partially here deltoid, but this isometric front raise, contra isometric contraction of the front arm. So you would raise this arm about, you know, shoulder level and your hand, your opposite hand comes as in the picture in both sides, but the opposite comes to press the arm down. You're not going to let the arm go down. And there's your isometric contraction of the deltoid. So I think the thing I want to really have you grasp here today is it's not like you need to be, I mean, we could take dumbbells and do front raises too, or lateral raises for deltoid strength, but it doesn't have to be that you have to have a set of dumbbells nearby. You can strengthen enough this muscle group 
and many of these groups with some isometric contractions. So that's why I've included this picture here. You can do it without any equipment needed. And just, again, do the isometric holds 20 seconds to start. Do it two or three times. Try something like that would be good for, for getting some strength around the shoulder joint. Okay, the trapezius is a multifunctional, as far as our body mechanics go, we use this a lot. Um, the upper fibers of the trapezius hold the head in a neutral position. The middle fibers retract the scapula to maintain a shoulder's back working posture. The lower trapezius fibers depress the scapula, which allows for a strong supported base from which any massage stroke can be applied. And if you think of a ballerina, for example, um, when they hold their arms out in front of them in a circle, their shoulders are back and down before their arms rise. And they kind of look like a floating into that circle at the shoulder level. They've engaged the trapezius and some other muscles, but to make their arms almost float in space. The same principles are gonna apply to our massage working arm. Try to approach the massage stroke with a floating arm. This means that there's no tension in the arm that you're massaging with. It becomes a tool with bone supporting bone, and then we just lean into it when we need to apply the stroke. And by retracting and depressing the scapulas, there's less chance of injury to the working arm. No tension in that massage arm is always our goal. So um, I'm going to show you a quick video next on this, but the exercise for this one, again, you can do this with no equipment. Here's one quick exercise you can do with this picture of her here laying on the floor and just lifting and squeezing the shoulder blades back together. So the arms are lifted off the ground, squeezing those shoulder blades back together. You could also do row variations. Okay. Up your volume if you need to a little bit to hear this. It is a difference if we approach the table with arms that are just lifted. Okay, that's just my dog's way doing it. Okay, but can you say a difference if I engage the core, shoulders back and down, lift, and kind of have a strong supported but floating arm, no tension anywhere here. But as we bring this type of an arm to the table, the serratus is helping us as well as our core and everything supported, but no tension can be here. Also, when we go to put stroke into a table, don't lose all the power by a retracted scapula and a non-engaged serratus. Okay, somebody had mentioned the slide before the video. I'm sorry, I don't know if it was serratus anterior before that prior video, or if it was this trapezius slide before the video we just watched. But um, that video with the shoulders down and back, we're just tying together that the trapezius is doing that for you. So this is a muscle that you wanna strengthen so that our body mechanics at the massage table are stronger and we avoid injury. Okay, so that's the slide that we just shoulders down and back. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to plank, ask the question if something's not clear and we can come back to that at the end, okay? Um, so planks, I love, love, love planks. If there were only one exercise that you guys wanna start today, make it a plank, okay? There's so many muscle groups that this is working for us as a massage therapist, really important. I like this exercise because you can start on your knees and just plank, as a beginner, and then you get stronger and stronger, and you can do a bunch of different plank variations. So this is a nice one. Um, lots of lots of muscle groups being strengthened here. Try to hold for 20 seconds to start, 30 seconds, get yourself up to a minute, and we're moving on. Okay, we're gonna touch on hands. Now I have at the fitmt.com has many more resources on keeping your hands fit specifically. Um, probably one, because that's near and dear to my heart. I, my thumbs were my issue when I uh, was starting. So basically we need the, the knowledge to fix the problem once we realize what the problem is. 
So it, it's, it's very liberating for you as a massage therapist to be in charge of your own health, but that means the longevity of your career as well. Nobody wants to have to be faced with a decision. Do I have to quit doing this? But I love doing this. I don't want to quit doing this. Like I'm good at this. I shouldn't have to stop because of pain. So remember the statistic we put at the beginning is 83% of therapists have had pain in their hands at some point. And the two things I'm going to cover quickly right now are just, um, ways to work smarter, not harder. And we're going to talk about varying your tools. So I know probably many of you are probably good at using other tools, but I'd like to give you a challenge to only massage with your hands 50% of the time that you're massaging. So that means in a one hour massage, an open hand can only be 50% of the time. I would really like it only 40% of the time. But the reason I sometimes get this panicked look from therapists when I say that to them is because they've never been shown how to use all the other tools. And then not only that, they don't know the body mechanics to use the other tools properly. So it still pulls in your good body mechanics, but there's no reason that you can't get an effleurage from a forearm. So just give your hands a break. Think of how else it's kind of fun. Think outside the box. Think how else you can accomplish your goal, whatever the stroke may be, effleurage, petrosage, um, some friction, just get it with a different tool and play with that a little bit. Also, this seems common knowledge, but I want you to use this more if this is not something that you do. Let's pre-treat the area of focus. So pre-treat, we're gonna work smarter here. We know that maybe we have found an area on the back muscles of our client that needs some more focus, okay? We're thinking it's the root of the problem and I'm gonna maybe put some heat there, go work somewhere else and come back so that now that area is pre-treated and the work for my hands now is much less as I get into that tissue a little bit deeper. Um, maybe it's a topical analgesic that you like to use to help you out. Maybe you have some training in cupping um, and you can, any mild fascial release, just prep the work, make it easier for when you go and get the results that you need. How can you make that easier on your hands and your body? Okay. All right, so that's a little bit on hands. We're keeping going, guys. Okay, body mechanics pitfalls. So awareness, 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 just be aware so that you can nip it in the bud if you start to feel something's off. The small massage room, I'm surprised how many I've had to work in in the past. Okay, there's cramped space would be maybe a problem for body mechanics. Unfortunately, a lot of therapists seem to run into this problem. The room itself is either too small or there's too much furniture in the room because it's a multi-purpose room to really have our freedom to work around the table. We should be able to get into a bow stance or a deep lunge for sure at the head of the table, but at all four sides of the table, otherwise our body mechanics are compromised. So do everything in your power to get a room configured that you can work in to stay healthy. Also, this is maybe the next, this is maybe the biggest thing is fatigue. Fatigue sets in for all of us at some point during our day of massage. You may have identified that you're good for about four massages a day. I don't know what your number is. Um, we're going to talk here in a second and I'm going to have you guys type in how many clients you see in a week, but um, whatever that number is that you found, just honor that, that that's your boundary right now. Now, as you become more fit, obviously you can, you have more muscular endurance and you can see more clients in a week, but fatigue, when that starts to hit is always preceding injury every time. So our fatigue, we start to get tired, which we're all going to do at some point. We start to get tired. Our body mechanics get a little lazy. Maybe we lean on the table a little bit more. Maybe something goes that we, you know, aren't aware of that we start compensating somewhere else because your shoulders get tired, your neck, your, your back starts to hurt a little bit, whatever it is in your body will also help us know what to strengthen, but whatever it is in your body for you that sets in when fatigue hits first 
is what we need to strengthen and focus on, but also we just need to be aware so that the body mechanics don't fly out the window and get, get terrible with, with um, fatigue. So the bad habits, we all tend to have bad habits um, and that just helps to have a knowledgeable eye watch you and um, point them out. So we need to identify probably the habits and the problems to begin with. Um, and if you need to find a coach or somebody, just find somebody knowledgeable who can watch you at the table and um, identify some of these things. Okay, so just awareness around your body mechanics is gonna help. Okay, this is more awareness and I want you guys to kind of test with me here. You get to bring in your answers in the chat. We're gonna look at these therapists and I want you to test your knowledge of what do you see that's wrong? So these are so fun. I hope that you can see some, some things uh, off the bat. So if we take this therapist far left here first, um, her face looks really like she's in pain. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but type in chat real quick here. If you see what you would fix with this therapist body mechanics, absolutely bones, not stock property lining up wrong. Okay. Oh my gosh. You guys are so good. Yay. Shoulders need to be back and down. She's off balance. Absolutely. She's twisting. She's not lined up. I don't know why the elbows are out there hanging out like chicken wings. That's not all good. Yes. Maria said these. So look at these neck muscles. I don't know. This is all just so much tension. That's unnecessary. And I don't, the, the tension in the hands and fingers right here, it's just so unnecessary. And that's just ouch, ouch, ouch. The whole thing says ouch to me. Okay. So you guys actually have, you guys who are here, Karen, thank you for your comment who are commenting on this. I, I think you pretty well have it because she's, um, got a lot going on this therapist that can be fixed. So yes, you guys look really, really good with what you're saying that neck Donna. Yes. Okay. So we know this, this therapist is obviously a lot of things we would fix. Let's bump over to the next therapist here. And, um, Go ahead and type what you think about this therapist, this woman standing in the center. So um, immediately I think low back pain, like, ouch, oh my gosh, just take a knee. Like she should just be down on one knee. Okay. I like the one knee because you can still weight shift front foot to back foot. And she looks like she's applying some cervical traction, which is fine. Leave her hands where they are. But if she backs away a little bit so that the elbows are straight, she can then just on her knee lean backwards with her whole body. I would stack the cervical spine straight here still a little bit. Um, but the main thing is protect your back. Definitely protect your back. Nobody please stand and do any work bent over like this. Okay, and then popping over here to the woman who looks like she's sitting on a stool at the head of the table. Okay, so this therapist, I don't have a lot screaming at me that looks super, super wrong. Other than I liked it was a seated posture and I wanna comment on your body mechanics from a stool, but her table might be slightly high. And I'm saying that because I like to sit in a stool. You guys should have an adjustable stool. Sit on something that you can move as needed throughout the session. So if she raised her stool a little bit, this might fix, but the table looks a little high here. Um, her, her neck could be stacked more, more straight. That cervical spine um, should be straight and tall. So the thing with sitting on a stool or however you prepare yourself the ischial tuberosities should have equal weight from left to right as you're preparing yourself on the stool. Feet flat to ground you. So as you're seated from the two sit bones, those ischial tuberosities left and right equally weighted, your spine should be stacked. Your core still is working for you here. No slumping on your stools, you guys. So your core should be stacked straight up in alignment as if there were a string pulled from the crown of your head skyward. Okay. So that should still be a supported body mechanic core working things still strong, even though you're sitting at the head of the table. Okay. 
we need to move through this. So I'm going to go, I've got a couple more here that we can do quickly, but yes, give me your comments, um, on these next few therapists. So this one, again, just looks like a back neck. We kind of covered things like this. So I'm going to pop down to this picture of this therapist working here. And you guys already had some really good comments in chat, um, about lining up your work. So this therapist's feet should be stepped around to this side of the table to line up bow stance, horse stance, whichever the feet need to be placed over here, back away from the work, straight elbows. This looks a little fingertippy to me. Um, like if this is a petrosage, which I don't know, maybe a, a whole hand petrosage is better. No tension in your hands here. If this is a finger tippy, uh, stroke, that would be too much hand, like a pinch or grasp of the hand. You can't get a lot of pressure that way. And that really puts strain on, on the hands. So step around back away, elbows straight, and then come at the work. Um, I always have a good, I think, rule of thumb for therapists to have your belly button facing your work. So you should be directly in front of, of your foot, your work focus. And then this therapist here, I hope definitely you can see that shoulders need to be down. So shoulders back and down away from his ears. Um, a, a lot of us, I know, and I've been guilty in the past, we kind of get into, as our working day goes, you wear your shoulders like earrings. So no earring shoulders, get the shoulders down and back. And he's really crowding his work. He's really on top. So my concern would be the wrist pressure here. The pressure that is put through the wrist joints when you're too much on top of your work is too great. And that eventually leads to injury. So taking about half, if he just backed up half a step, a step back away, shoulders back and down, and then still come at this work, that may be better. And he may even need to move his feet around. So just depending on the stroke. Um, so the, he's lined up with his work belly button. Um, and then this last picture here, um, not a lot wrong with her use of elbow here, but uh, the tension in the wrist doesn't need to be there. So that could even be a neutral joint or just drop it, drop the joint downward. Um, and then this lineup is okay. Maybe a little twisted, um, but can't really see her feet. So the, the lineup of this tool and body mechanics is not terrible. I am not a fan of having this extra hand on the table, but that is, or the extra hand on the client here. Um, I really am a big proponent. You should have your balance set from your base of support, your feet upward and your core strong enough and your legs strong enough that this hand is not here for balance. This hand doesn't need to be the client. It's a little distracting for have the client focus on your area of focus with you. And you shouldn't need to balance yourself here. Okay, you guys, we've got to move on, but I do want to, we're going to move into nutrition. So uh, really quick, I know I'm flipping on you and there's a lot of chats that I feel like I don't have time to check right at the second. Um, I am going to ask you, I'm going to ask you a new question for chat though. Will you type in for me, please? How many clients you see in a week? Um, one of the things as we move into nutrition is I want to focus on healthy nutrition to keep your energy levels high through the whole day. And, um, it, I know a lot of you probably already eat healthily, but the, the, the goal here is for those who could pick up a couple extra tips here would be great. Or if you know that your diet needs an overhaul, great. This will be a little bit of a start too, but directly related to energy levels. We shouldn't take caffeine to get us through our whole massage day or like, shoot, I forgot my lunch. And I, now I don't have time to go grab lunch. What am I going to do? Um, we start to feel crappy and then our massage is crappy. And then our clients don't get that best work. And you know, everything snowballs if your nutrition isn't key set. Okay. So we're going to cover what macronutrients are really quickly. 
like really quickly. Sorry, you guys, but we're just brushing surface here. Okay. Timing your meals for consistent energy because you can keep food, can keep your, it will keep your energy good through the day. If you eat right. Um, we're going to talk about meal prep. So I'm really going to try to grab some numbers really quick here. So, um, 10 to 15 clients a week, 15, there's a 25 to 30, 20 to 25. Okay. I'm just making sure sometimes I see numbers like 35, 40, and I about croak, <laughs> but okay. Um, Okay. So that's good. So yes, uh, you know, if we use see, so there's a 30 to 35, so see, and that's, that's a lot. Um, but it's doable if you're taking care of your body. So, and it of course depends what type of work you're doing. So I don't want to get off track with that, but, um, let's go into what macronutrients are just a brief click on macros. Okay. So The macronutrients are the three main nutrients that our body needs in large quantities just to sustain itself and be healthy. So they fall into three easy categories, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Um, I've put some percentages up here, and that just means that as you eat, let's look at everything that you eat in one day, there should be 45 to 65% of that as carbohydrates, 10 to 35% of that as proteins. 20 to 35% of what you eat in a full day in the fat category. Okay. I am adding water as a fourth macro, which you will see done somewhere, but it is so, so important to stay hydrated and massage therapist too. So my little side note on water, and we have some fun things at the fit MT that we do and how to drink more water and what to put in the water and, and all of that, especially as summer comes, we usually start talking more about things like that, but hydration is really important for you. Um, it's probably what you preach to your clients, right? How important hydration is at the muscle tissue level. Um, it keeps our brain fog away, headache away. Um, a lot of times hunger is masked by being thirsty. So, um, just number one, stay hydrated. Now, not all carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are created equally. And I like to talk about this with carbohydrates because yes, chips and cookies are carbohydrates, but fruits and vegetables are also carbohydrates. So, you know, our body deals with those two things separately and there's more energy that's going to come from the fruits and the vegetables than the chips and the cookies. So obviously the carbohydrates that we want to choose are complex carbohydrates, which last longer. Our body metabolizes them nicely. So we want things like whole grains. Um, it could be oats, brown rice, quinoa, whole wheat pasta, um, whole grain breads, fruits, berries, all kinds of things can fall into this. And, um, there's more resources on the fit MT to the, for, for more things about food eating, but, um, beans, lentils, peas, milk, and yogurt falls in carbohydrates. Now, some of those things also will fall into the protein category. So still milk and yogurt has protein in it. Um, proteins obviously are meats. And if you're not a meat eater, there's plenty of ways to get protein too, but you've got egg whites, um, tofu protein powders. Quinoa has a high amount of protein in it. So those are all fun things to add to your diet. If you haven't tried some of them and then the healthy fats are things like the yolk of an egg, um, olive oil, avocado oil, butter, avocados themselves are great. They're just not always ripe and in readily available, but love avocados. Um, flaxseed and chia seeds are good and fatty fishes like salmon and sardines. Um, that's a quick overview on macros. And then to timing your meals are going to be what keeps your energy consistent. So eat early, eat regularly, eat balanced. I know that what you eat 
not only what you eat, but when you eat is just as important as what you're putting in your body. So we know that um, there's those times we're just trying to plan ahead here and not get caught at work all day without something nutritious to eat. So even if you're grabbing quick snacks, um, the rule of thumb to take away from this is eat balanced. And that would be every time you eat, have a carbohydrate, a protein and a fat within it. That balance is what keeps your energy sustained. And that balance keeps you full longer. And that balance makes you feel better throughout the whole day. So if everything had a carbohydrate, a protein and a fat, you're good to go. Or maybe you're just grabbing a quick hard boiled egg and a handful of almonds or something, but you've got at least pulling from two categories, um, for something that keeps your energy up. Okay. This flows right into meal prepping because on the meal prep days, you're going to be, uh, happy to, again, add in your meal prep. You're going to batch cook some proteins, some carbohydrates and fats. You're going to be able to grab them all and package them together. So meal prep, um, just take a day a week. Once you get the hang of this, this is great. So just take a day a week. Um, Produce, you might need to go grab fresh produce twice a week, but find what works for you. Start small, uh, meal prep with a friend if you want to get this um, going and it is more fun with a friend. But there's no reason if you're going to cook two chicken breasts for dinner, just cook five. If you're going to brown up some ground beef or ground turkey, um, do two pounds of it so that you have some more left over. Um, my house lately has liked big batches of meatballs. So you just put them out on a cookie tray with foil underneath. It's quick cleanup, but you could do two dozen meatballs, bake them all in the oven, and then you've got quick proteins to grab. Uh, also hard boiled eggs have been big at my house right now. And the hard boiled eggs are a quick ready. You can, you know, boil them up and have them ready and sitting in the fridge. Um, cook up a batch of some quinoa or some whole wheat pasta if you like pasta. And so you are going to wash, pre chop all your veggies, and everything's ready for the work week or whatever day here that you're going to meal prep. Um, I like to do cans of beans are really versatile, and there's all kinds of black beans and white beans and kidney beans, and you can do a lot with beans. Um, edamame is also a, a big one that we've been doing lately. Um, so they're really versatile. And if you're going to actually take it all the way to prepackaged meals, sitting in the fridge, you have your containers with lids, you put your protein, your carbohydrate, and your fat in snap the lid on You've got them, just grab them and go. So it's ready. Your meal prep day saves you a whole week of eating, at least your lunches. Um, so for at work, you're always going to have something to grab. Yay. It's fun. Okay. Um, let's wrap up and then we're going to go into questions here, but basically we've covered a review of our body mechanics. Just hopefully anything came to light. What new knowledge might you need? Let's say you realize that your massage school way back when didn't maybe do a whole lot on covering good body mechanics, seek out, find a new continuing education course, find a coach, find somebody knowledgeable who can evaluate your body mechanics for you. And, um, Let's just get from the ground up. That's the most important part is your body mechanics. And then you can build all from there. Um, there is, you can email me at the There's the Gmail address. Um, if you'd like a free body mechanics consultation. Also, I want you to practice, practice, practice your weaknesses so that they are second nature. So if you feel that there's an area of your body mechanics that may be causing you trouble, or you know, is causing you trouble. If that mid back, you know, starts aching for you halfway through every work day or halfway through the work week, um, we need to look at what musculature you need to be stronger in to have a better posture and better body mechanics at the table. So your job is to exercise the next one here, gain strength in joints. You're going to need to do some exercise. You're a massage therapist. You should be exercising. And yes, it's great to go for a walk, but you need some strength. So walking, bike riding, keep doing all of that. Add some strength training into your fitness regimen. 
fitness will be your best friend for a long, healthy massage career and life, but gain that strength in the joints. Um, we're going to eat for energy. Now is our last bullet point here. Pay attention and plan ahead. Just pay attention to what and when you're eating. It gets easier if you just pay attention and then put in a carbohydrate, a protein and a fat with every meal and watch your energy levels improve. It's great. Okay. If you are somebody that knows, or you want some more information about hands and how to keep your hands fit, um, there's a free hand pain report at fitmt.com. As well as if you're interested in a food guide, you can grab that at the fitmt.com as well. So you'll see it as soon as you go there. Um, and that's something that'll just be popped right into your email box. Um, but I know we've covered a lot of areas, but at the FitMT, we do always talk some nutrition and it might be a blog post. It might be, you know, a weekly newsletter that comes in your email inbox. It's, you know, things on social media, it'll rotate through. So we talk, um, nutrition, you get recipes, it's kind of fun. We do challenges together, maybe, um, or just fun things as a group that are just easier to do as a group. It all kind of holds us accountable. So it could be in the nutrition realm. It could be a 30 day core challenge where I'm, I'm challenging you for, you know, 30 days of core work and we all do it together. Um, so, uh, the body mechanics improves with all of these areas and all of your self-care as a massage therapist is really important. So, um, you guys can follow me along on social media and, um, I think we're ready for questions. Karen too. So, yeah. okay. Uh, sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So Angela, sure. this is, this is, this has been great. I love how you included so many common sense tips on exercise, body mechanics and nutrition. Um, so we've had some questions come in. So, Paula asks if massage therapists are working upper body muscles during massage, why do we need to do more exercises to strengthen them? Shouldn't we be stretching those muscles? Well, stretching is important, of course, but the, the point, let me try to tie this to, to the point that I'm making is we're using them. Yes. But as you would train your body to run a marathon, you need to train your body to sustain the workload that you're doing. So if you're only seeing four clients a week, that's very, very different than if you're seeing 25 to 30 clients a week. And if your body and your body mechanics are fine and your body is feeling good at the workload you're at, maybe you're fine. So if you're thinking that the muscles are working, the upper body muscles are working during massage, it is not the same thing as you specifically training individual muscles surrounding the joints. So yes, I would say you could potentially leave massage school and work yourself up to a certain client load and never do any strength training. But the statistics show that injury comes if you are not training specific joints, uh, specific muscle groups. So does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Um, well, I, it sounds like <laughs> I think. this is, this is Karen. Um, yeah. so, and Tom asks or says, I work at a spa that only allows 15 minutes between sessions. What one thing should I do in that time to be best prepared for my next massage session? Ooh, that's a good question. And you know, it's so good, good ask because so many people are in this boat. Oh, and that's another thing of mine that, that, that we have no time in between clients. Okay. So for your own body, um, I want to stand up and do this, but you're not going to be able to see me. I love a, an inverted, like a bend at the waist stretch. It rejuvenates your energy. This is a yoga thing, but, um, a forward fold. Let me explain it in words. Um, I like the arms back. Okay. Cause you know that we're massaging in front of our, our body all day long. I like arms back and up Can you kind of see and a forward fold at the waist. So you can bend the knees to stretch the hamstrings or not a little bit of a knee bend forward fold at the waist arms behind you. V one best simple energy rejuvenator and stretch everything out in between clients that I could recommend. I'm going with that, Tom. Was that his name, Tom? 
Thank yes, you. Yes. <laughs> so we have just one more question. Um, do you ever recommend any handheld tools for massage or do you think that using the elbows is the way to go? Oh, we have such a discussion on handheld tools. I'm not opposed to them. I just think that um, I'm not a fan because I lose myself the sensitivity of touch as soon as I bring a tool in. And, and, and I'm not a fan of that. So I don't love tools. Yes, they could save your hands. And at some point they're probably necessary because a tool can do a smaller pointed pressure than your elbow maybe can. Um, just be careful with them and still use your body mechanics for the tool correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so thank you, Angela. This has been a presentation by Massage Magazine Insurance Plus and the FitMT. You can learn more at thefitmt.com. Thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you, Karen, for the opportunity. And thank you guys for tuning in today. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.